you know what? People know that it starts at 1.30 and I don't want Laura to feel rushed. So, so can I, can we start? Is that you, okay? You go, you do you, man. I will watch the little, the enter board and we'll record and it'll be a delight. All right. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Welcome everyone to our, our virtual tour and YSS check-in. This, this event is made possible by our Youth Services section of the Wisconsin Library Association. Today, we will be talking to Laura Fuller from the Rochold Branch Library in Portage and Trisha Cox from the Waterford Public Library. We'll take library tours, discuss programming, and discover ways our co colleagues are dealing with the pandemic. If you are interested in hosting a virtual tour or know of anybody that might be, just have them contact me. Before we start, I would like to read our YSS mission statement. YSS advocates for professional empowerment, collaboration, and innovative, inclusive, and intentional services. Our YSS provides a forum and resource for people in Wisconsin's libraries who share a commitment to serving children and young adults, their parents, caregivers, and teachers. It is a vital dynamic group Yay! <laughs> and welcomes new members. Just check the box on your WLA renewal or membership application and you're all set. As we go through these presentations, please feel free to type your questions in the chat on the right of your screen, or usually that seems to work pretty well. Um, they will be answered throughout the presentation. And thank you so much for joining us today. We're really excited to have the tours and we're glad that you could join us. And now here's Laura from the Rochelle Branch Library. Welcome, Laura. Thank you. I was very honored to be asked. I very much appreciate the opportunity to show off our library. Um, I am the branch librarian for Portage County Public Library. So I'm a little bit different from the rest of you, it sounds like in that I'm not technically a youth services person. Uh, the way that the Portage County Public Library is set up is we have a main or kind of a headquarters library located in Stevens Point. With a, Stevens Point has a population of about 30 to 40,000. And then I manage the three smaller libraries, which are Rocheltt Library, Almond Library, and Plover Library. Rocheltt has a population of about 500 people currently. And um, quite honestly, and you'll see when I start the tour, this is the most beautiful, and I, I might be slightly, you know, um, word just blanked out on me. But anyway, I might, biased? I might be biased. I might be slightly biased. But me too, you and me both. Gorgeous <laughs> library, and I was thrilled that I get to manage it. <laughs> um, so basically, with with the way that we work as as a team, Portage County Public Library, there are a total of five admin, and there's like a tech services person, and she handles the cataloging for all the library, all four libraries, and there's a youth services person located at the Stevens Point Ranch named Nicole Ozanich. You might have heard that name before. Um, and she pretty much determines like our summer library program and so on. But we do get to work with her. I get to work with Nicole and add my input. And if we've got an idea, um, she, we usually try to figure out a way to incorporate it with the whole program. Um, so that's that. So as I said, Rushfield has a population of about 500. Uh, the library was in existence. I don't know a lot about the history, but I do know that the library itself was in existence when the four libraries consolidated in 1982 and became the Portage County Public Library. Mm -hmm. I actually, a little tidbit of interest, I actually worked as a support staff person for the Portage County Public Library in the Youth Services Department in the early 90s. So I remember coming out to the Rochelle Library in the early 90s before this renovation happened. And I'm gonna switch my screen now so that you guys can see. 
what I'm going to be talking about is in terms of before the renovation and after. Did you all get access to that picture? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So when you are looking to the left of that bigger building there, the left part is the old library. And it was a pretty small space, um, maybe 30 by 30 or something like that. And that's where the old, the old library was. Um, it was also a shared space with the Portage County, or I'm sorry, with the Rochelle Village. So anytime a board meeting had to occur, the center of the room had to be cleared and that was where the tables and chairs were set up for the village to meet. Um, so it was very, there were flooding issues. It was a cement floor. The walls were not finished. They were a weird kind of peeling paneling. Um, some walls were cement block. It was rough. And the library existed there for, gosh, 20 or 30 years. Okay. Then, oh, and off to your right, where you can see those three big windows, those used to be garage doors. And so that right part of the building, the bigger part, was the Rochelle Fire Department. So that Sometimes we'd get some diesel, some yummy diesel smells coming into the library. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then in about 2012 or 2010, maybe, um, the village built two different buildings. They, they took over a building for the village to exist in, and they built a brand new fire department for their volunteer firefighters. And that left that bigger part of the building empty. And the people of Rochelt, the community itself, really came together and began a wonderful fundraising campaign. There were a couple of really nice donations, but a large part of it was just individual people donating small amounts. And they 100% backed the library and we raised enough funds that in 2014, we could, hmm. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to get back to you guys. Just double tap, no, nope. close. Are you just trying not to share your screen anymore? That is correct. Well, here, I mean, I can do this. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Assistance. Um, so, oh gosh, I totally forgot where I was. When, when, um, oh, they, they raised the funds and by 2014, the space behind me was converted from a garage for two fire trucks into this gorgeous library. Um, and the story just keeps getting better because I, I was hired as the branch librarian in 2015. So I started keeping the circulation stats. Every year between 2013 and 2019, we're not gonna talk about 2020. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, every single year, the cir circulation statistics went up between 10 and 35 percent. Wow. That's amazing. Yes. That's great. Yeah. So that's our history. That's a little bit about us. Um, I'm going to actually kind of go on the move now. I'm going to unplug the laptop from power and we're going to take a trip. Yay! Yay! So we'll start off with the circulation desk. Are you guys seeing okay? Yes. yes. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so that's the checkout desk. We have some modifications up for COVID. Um, but it's still fully out equipped. And um, whereas when I worked here in 20 or in 1990s, as I mentioned, we had one staff for Rushold, and that person worked 12 hours a week. Um, we now have two staff at Rushold, and the total is probably 60 hours a week. Wow. Um, Big difference. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the county really stepped up too. I mean, I talked a lot about how the village came through, but the county also came through to help out. Um, I just am pointing out the door. That's the general lobby area. And then passed into the next door is the meeting room space, which right now is not very pretty. It's <laughs> full of a lot of excess chairs and all of our toys out of the play area. I have a feeling you guys know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Laura? Yes. That meeting room area, is that where the board used to go for their meetings and like the community room? Is that where your library was before? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I wanted to point out this area just briefly. Um, there are two things of historical interest here in the library, and this is where we've housed them. Up at the top, you can see a fellow named Malcolm Rawl Schultz. He was a descendant of the original J.G. Rachel who established the town. And he also is a prolific author in the 1950s and 60s. So we have created a separate collection of Malcolm Rachel's works. We also got donated to us from the fire department right before they left some of their equipment, which we house here in kind of recognition of what this building used to be at one time. <laughs> and then we have a really nice, well, non-COVID era times, we have a really nice seating area, um, lots of tables and chairs for individual work, group work, um, not even work back here in this corner it's more of a kind of just sitting and chatting kind of a space with some comfy lounging chairs. Um, then we start this one bookshelf here is our, on the very end facing the windows is our young adult area. And then it goes into adult nonfiction and adult fiction. And I can just walk along here. We're gonna get something blocking our view momentarily for our display. And then this is our children's section. So that's children's nonfiction. And then the inner, um, on the end here, ooh, there we go. Look at that, I'm magical. Children's nonfiction. And then in this bay is children's fiction. And then we have picture books and board books and books on tape and books on cassette and all of that stuff. And this is our general play area. We shut down, we have something called an awe station. I don't know if you guys are familiar with those. That's right back in that corner. Um, that's a computer that's preloaded with games and it's just child appropriate stuff. And um, we shut that down when COVID first broke out. We were worried about the touch issues. We're actually talking about getting them running very soon. And then we finish up with juvenile DVDs and games and just kind of another little seating area. Right down the middle is our six public terminals we felt like they were a little too close to each other. So we shut them down to keep people spaced apart a little bit better. We're down to only two right now, but again, we're thinking about opening up a couple more and putting them back into public use. And then behind the um, computer stations are the adult, is an adult collection of DVDs, magazines, the new books, things like that right next to the door. And that's Rachel. Yes. <laughs> Yay, very good. Yeah, oh, I, I wanted to point out, I think you probably all noticed that beautiful, beautiful. creation. Oh. <laughs> um, we do something called 1000 Books Before Kindergarten. Mm -hmm. cool. So what we do is at every level, at every 100 books, a child can get a cutout of an acorn or a 
we write their name on it and then they tell us where in the tree they want it planted and oh. then we somehow figure out a way to attach it Very <laughs> cool. um, they, they grow throughout the tree and we have a version of this tree at all four of our locations cool yeah. Laura, I just have a couple questions for you. Oh, so when, when you have story time at your library, is that in the small area, like in the kids section, the children's section? So we've done it both ways. We've done it in the children's section and we've also done it in the meeting room. Um, okay. It's a matter of like whoever's doing it, what they prefer. And also how noisy we're willing to let the library get. <laughs> um, sometimes, and it, it just kind of seems to go in different stretches as to who's using the library and what they prefer. Sometimes you get a group of adults that really just want the library to be as quiet as possible. Um, and that's when we'll move it to the meeting room for a while. But it's fun to do it in the library too. I think there are also adults who really like to see and hear those little voices. Mm -hmm. so. Sure, I bet. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then the other question I had is, do you have any programs that you especially liked that you would like to share with us? Maybe sure. COVID time or any other time? Sure. Um, when the pandemic hit, we, um, for, uh, I thought I'd talk to you guys more about what the youth services department did. Mm -hmm. um, they immediately switched to Facebook Live for their story times. Mm -hmm. So every single day, there is a staff member who is doing a story time on Facebook Live at 1030 in the morning. It started off hugely successful and it's kind of been dwindling a little bit in its attendance. So we've been thinking about cutting back from daily to maybe three times a week. Mm -hmm. um, we also started up something that we call the learning labs. And the learning labs are craft slash hobby slash STEM kits mm -hmm. that the kids can kind of, it's like a take and make. They pick sure. one up, they take it home, and then they, fig they figure it out. The um, people who create those also create videos directional videos for those so people so kids can get the video to follow along and finally um we started up something called, that we're calling teen lit loot so <laughs> kids call it we pick a different topic and then um kids call in and reserve a bag and tell us a little bit of information about what their reading level is if they have any specific interests or any books that they want us to avoid and then based on the topic, like the very first one was dragons. So the bag would include a fantasy book or two about that, you know, that had a dragon in it. it and that book would be checked out to that patron. And then it also had a really neat craft on how to make a dragon egg. I want, I wanted a kit so badly. <laughs> Darn it, it's, doesn't it just stink sometimes that as staff we can't take them home? Um, and then it had some fun little trinkets or doodads, just fun things for the kids to keep at home. I'm not going to remember off the top of my head what they were for the dragon kit, but I know for the cooking kit, we did like a spatula, um, just, you know, something fun to throw yeah. in there. And those have been wildly successful, so successful actually that the adult department started, has started doing them for adults as well. So that's really, that's really where we focused. Of course, the book clubs went online as well. A lot has gone online. And then with summer, I'm sure as, as since the DPI purchased Beanstack for the state of Wisconsin, I'm sure a lot of you have also made the switch from mm -hmm. We had paper summer library programs, and now it's all Beanstack, um, which it has advantages and disadvantages. I'm a little sad that we don't get to interact with kids. We used to, you know, stamp their things, and they I uh, used to stamp the back of their front hand. They loved it, but yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> we have to, um, we have to 
limit our re uh, interaction with kids right now. So mm -hmm. being stuck it is. And um, let's see, what else are we doing for summer? Oh, this was a big decision. Nicole and I talked about this one for a while. We, she decided um, not to hire any professional performers this year. And instead, I mean, when you think about how much money, we used to hire three professional performers. Mm -hmm. So instead, what we've done with that is all of those years where we would go around to area businesses and request donations for prizes, mm -hmm. because we were able to say, you know, it's, we know that you've had a hard year. We've had a hard year. So we're going to buy gift certificates mm -hmm. from your business. Mm -hmm. And that's our way of saying, thank you for supporting us all the years is in the past. Mm -hmm. So that was a really nice, I think, thing for the whole community to see us doing. Mm -hmm. um, that's about it. Laura, how well, many people can be in the Rashall Library right now at a time? Well, let me start off by saying we have never come anywhere near the limit. I want to say it's 20. Okay. Um, it might be a little bit less than that. Disappointingly for us, Rochelle's numbers have fallen the most of any of our branches and they're taking the longest to recover. And I think what it, that is, is that tells us how much of a community hub this building is. It is not just for books. It is not just to pick stuff up. It's mm -hmm the programming that people appreciate. It's the, you know, the computers, it's, it's the people just, they love to come in and talk to our staff, but sometimes for too long, but um, <laughs> it's a, it's another community service that we provide to our, our lonely seniors. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I hope that things can keep opening back up so we can see our people more again. Well, thank you so much, Laura. That was an awesome tour. Does anyone else have any questions or comments for Laura before she signs off? No, but thank you. And I can't believe how much we have in common, despite being so far apart. As you were talking, I was thinking, well, I was going to say a lot of that. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm really sorry. Cool. <laughs> no, very good. Very cool. No, So far wondering. apart and yet so much alike. No, uh, it just makes me like I don't think I'm going to sign out. I think I'd like to watch Trisha's. Oh, great. You should. Okay, you great. should. Well, it just makes me want, like, I haven't been to Rochelle in far too long, and I need to come back. And I'll come visit the library again, and then I'll go eat some barbecue next door. Awesome. That's a Why do they have an awesome barbecue place? Yeah, the, the owner is not the friendliest person, but he knows how to make some good barbecue. Let's just put it that way. So, like, yeah. you go, you don't go for the chats, but you go for the, the noms. Very good. Yeah, yeah, he's actually, he's got a food truck now. And today, oh, out somewhere in the area. I saw it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, thank you so much, Laura. That was great. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. Yeah. And now we are going to listen to Trisha from the Waterford Public Library. Welcome, Trisha. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm so glad I get to show you our beautiful library today. Um, we are going to be touring the building. We're in Western Racine County. I don't know if it's just the six of us or if there's more of us anymore, but we are in Western Racine County. Um, our village population is about 5,400 and our service population is about 24,000. Um, this building was built in 2001. And so 20 years now that we've been open in this building. Before that, we were in the basement of Village Hall, which is right next door. So you'll see pictures of that in a little bit. Um, and we are going to start, let me turn my camera around. We are going to start in our community room. Um, this is a thousand square foot space where you will see that there are um, taped squares on the floor. Mm -hmm. Our building actually reopened really early compared to a lot of other libraries. We've been open since June 8th of 2020. And we had in-person programming last summer. It was very limited, but we had some programming and this is how we did it. We had registration. We were limited in this thousand square foot space. We were limited to 10 families and each family had their own square. And that's how we did story time. We did dance parties. We did story time yoga. So we've been doing programs since last June. Um, this room also has a little kitchen and there at the, where you see the whiteboard up there, there's a drop down screen. We used to do movie nights 
and all sorts of fun in here. I'll show you my original um, storytelling room too when we get that far. But we are gonna head into the main part of the library. Um, and the only part that'll probably be really annoying is my card is gonna bump over these tiles out here and probably be loud and annoying. Oh, and you'll fall down. We don't want that. Right, try again. There we go. So this is our lobby as people come in. And when we were doing just curbside pickup, we had things in here that people could run in and grab. But again, we've been at our doors open for a long time. I promise I'll get five and Trisha. Yeah. Yeah, will you repeat that once you get onto the carpet? Nobody could hear what you were saying. There, how's that? We did Lovely. stuff in our lobby um, for pickup way back at the beginning when we first opened our doors. But this is, as you just walk in, you can see there are people in here. We currently are at 50% capacity, which allows us about 75 people in the building at once. And that is, we've never hit that. You can see we have our need a mask, take a mask station. Um, this is our Friends of the Library shop. Dakota's <laughs> mom is here to pick up Dakota. Hello. <laughs> and um, one of our exciting things right now is little nine-year-old Josh Miller wrote a book and uh -huh. published it about uh, the library's bearded dragon. Um, and that is actually our bearded dragon. He built the props and brought them in for actual photographs to illustrate his book. And that's for sale here in our Friends of the Library shop. He's very excited every time he sells a book. Um, and our circulation desk. We have, go ahead, it's okay. We do have our sneeze guards at both stations here. Mm -hmm. Walking back, we're walking through our new books right now. And back in this area, we have our beautiful grand piano that we were able to purchase out of some memorial funds. And I'll see if I can show you. Well, we have someone studying, so maybe I won't. We do have like our, at Christmas time, we put a big Christmas tree back there and we'll do story time in the library back here when we feel like being loud at the library. Mm -hmm. um, but usually we're in the community room where we don't disturb quite so many people. Here you can see our views of the river. Oh, I see there's some geese out in the river too. We are right on the Fox River. This is our teen area. We almost fell again. Stand you back up. This is our teen area. My partner, I have a, uh, my partner, Julie, who's in the meeting. She works 24 hours a week and is in charge of all the teen tween area and programming. So I'm kind of going fast just because I want to get over to the juvenile section here. We also have two beautiful study rooms that can be borrowed with your library card. And now that we are at 50% capacity, those are reopened again for people to use. These are our audiobooks, which we have only Playway and CD. I heard um, the Rochelle Library still has some cassettes. We don't have those anymore. Those have been weeded. And we also have our Playaway or our launch pads. Those are like her all computers, except these can check out their tablets preloaded with learning apps on them. Um, divided into age groups. So those circulate really well, much better than I would expect. You can see these are our juvenile computers. We have a bank just like this for adults and we have them with our dividers that uh, we decorated uh, for COVID. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I almost skipped the bearded dragon. We have to back up. Here is I just got this up. We have a wonderfully creative shelver who helped decorate the sneeze guard by the children's cert computer for us. Look at all your little butts. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Everyone was making fun of her. She was making her animal butts. Oh, is Mushu? He's in his cage. We'll bring him <gasps> out in a little bit. But I Mushu, wanted to meet you. you. You'll be able to meet him. I'll have Julie take him out at the end and we can all meet him. But at the moment, oh, maybe Katie will pull him out for us. Mushu, we adopted in 20, October of 2020. He is a two-year-old bearded dragon. He was in a foster home 
um, because in his first home, he was in, kept with a bunch of other bearded dragons that picked on him and bullied him Aww. and nipped his tail and wouldn't let him eat. Oh. So he's actually, thank you. He's actually a bunch of jerks. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I can't <laughs> see him. There he is. He is... He has been the best addition ever. We have kids sign up to read to him. Everyone who comes in says hello. Even our older gentlemen that come in every morning to read the paper and do the crossword puzzle always come to check on Mushu. Mm-hmm. Um, he's super chill. Aren't you super chill? Yeah. Um, we had a naming contest. So his full name is Sir Mushu Dragon of the Books. And nice. we are, yeah, we're, we love him. He's our favorite. He loves to come out and play on our desk. He's been such a bonding um, experience for us. Thank you, Katie. And for not only for the staff, but for the patrons who come in and everyone wants to play with Mushu. And there's our other, we have to still change the sneeze guard decoration. I don't know if you can see that. We still have our spring trees there, but we're working on it. We're, we're getting there. Okay, so in the children's area, we want to stop here. We do book bundles. We did them before COVID, but super popular during curbside pickup for COVID. Um, five books, usually a nonfiction and four picture books or early readers on the same topic. Parents love just being able to quick grab something about dinosaurs. Sorry. And we have our craft kits. We have two crafts available right now. There's um, coffee filter butterflies or scratch off butterflies. Um, our craft kits always have something that they have to bring back. That's how we can count them for circulation. There has to be something in there that they're borrowing and returning. We average about 75 of just this age group a week. We also have teen ones and tween ones. And they got so popular, we added adults during COVID. So we have lots of those. And these up here are our If You Liked collection. They're the uh, big kid version of book bundles. So if you liked Harry Potter and you're looking for something to read, we've got a couple options up here for you. Um, so that's another piece we manage. But this is my, I don't know if you can see the whole thing. Let me pick it up. My beautiful juvenile area. Just a whole look at, at it here. We used to have, way in the back here, all the toys and the train table and fun. And we had to put all our fun away, but we'll start bringing it out here. We still don't want to encourage people to stay too long so that we don't come too close to that limit. Um, but we'll probably start putting a few things out until then people can ask at the desk for some toys to play with while they're here. And we clean them in between. Mm -hmm. This is one of our COVID editions. These are family film bins. Since we couldn't do movies here anymore because of COVID, we packed it up and put it in a bin for you to check out and take home. So inside each bin is the movie, the soundtrack, a book that either is about the movie specifically or about an animal in the movie, and then a couple either games to play together or crafts to do together, some kind of activities that relate to the movie that you can all do together. Uh, as a family, and those have been so popular. They're really hard to, I have 13 of them or 14 of them currently, and we have four on the shelf. Every day I'm usually re-cleaning and putting out a couple new ones. Um, but there's always a plan in there too that tells you what to do. Um, those are super fun. Another thing we added because, this is our parenting area, by the way, these are all parenting books pulled out of the adult nonfiction and put just here so that as parents are watching their kids play, they can browse. These are read and discover kits. They're kind of like what Laura was talking about earlier. Um, they're a couple books on a topic and a project of some sort. This one, oh here, this one's fun. This one's on whales. So inside is not only a couple nonfiction books about whales, but in here we've got um, fact sheets on all the different kinds of whales. And in this one, that's how long in real life this whale is. There's, so there's like 14 of those in here and they get to spread them out and do explore with that. So each of these on a different topic is meant to allow for some learning at home. The dinosaur one has those dinosaur eggs where you get to crack the eggs open and find a new dinosaur. Um, the camouflage one, you get to dump stuff, toothpicks out on the grass and see which ones are the hardest to find. They're all different colors. So they're like a science kit to check out, take home, do the activity and then bring back. 
we have our library of things are kept in these binders. We have seven binders full of games, puzzles, steam things, and toys that patrons can check out. The list is on our website too, if you're interested in all the things we have. But for example, if you want to take out the Coda Pillar, the green card is in there. So you take the green card out and bring it up to the circ desk and you can grab your item. We check those out even during COVID. We just quarantined and cleaned a lot. Lots and lots and lots of cleaning. So these are our picture books, but I wanna walk you back here a little bit. I can't go too far because if I go, if you look along the back, oh, there you are. If I, you look along the back wall, you can see the closets. Those are my storage closets. But if I go that far, the internet kicks me off and then I lose you. So I'll stay here, but I wanted to show you our thousand books. Let me see, you can see our thousand books frogs. That's our thousand books display. The frogs hop down the river for every hundred books they hop to the next little cattail. Oh, and at the end, well at 500 books, they get a frog friend to read to. And at the end, they move to our wall of fame that says they read a thousand books before kindergarten and we put their picture up there. And we also let them choose their favorite book. We buy a new copy of it and add it to the library's collection, put a book plate inside, commemorating their achievement. So that's what we do for a thousand books before kindergarten. Okay. Um, oh, our fish tank. This is, just stop and see the fish tank. I don't know what else you guys wanna see, but I do wanna show you our outside. So I'm gonna sneak into my office and share my screen so that you guys can see where we do programming outside. Let's see if I can get my screen shared here. Close my door so I can take my mask off. All right. And can you see my screen? Yes. Excellent. Okay. So this is the outside of our beautiful building that we are so lucky to have. Wanted you guys to see the whole outside of it. And as you walk out of our lobby, here's walking down the sidewalk. This summer, we are actually going to do a sidewalk obstacle course in collaboration with the UW-Madison Extension. They're going to come do it for us. Yeah, I'm walking away for just a second so I can grab my notes that I left out on the table here. Um, and then as you walk around the corner, you can see the parking lot. There, now I've got all my notes. And we will, this summer, we'll be closing off the parking lot a couple times so that we can have things outside in this area. This is the back of our building right along the river. You can see that little brick circle. You can see it better in this next picture. We use that area where, for when child care centers or groups walk up, we can be outside and have a story time in that area. So we'll be doing that this summer with the local child care centers. Mm -hmm. This summer will be the first time they've been back in the building since before COVID. And that's our little bridge right near that brick area. It is such a beautiful spot to go out and, and be. We have a little turtle. Yeah, we have a little turtle. He's a, I think he's a tortoise, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> you know, it's, it's an important distinction. Yeah, you can see our windows are our windows you see in the upper right hand corner there. Mm -hmm. And this is the canoe launch that is just down from the library. You can see I've well, got a duck in there, it looks like. <laughs> you, looking back, you can see how far I am from the library building. The building you see uh, directly on our right is Village Hall. That's where mm -hmm. the library was before 2001 in the basement there of Village Hall. But this park, as long as we get permission from the village, we can use for programming. And we intend to do that a few times this summer. Um, we'll be having our June Dairy Days celebration in the park this summer. Um, we have one, Lakeshore's library system is supplying us with one story wagon. Thank you, Jen Puccini. And we'll have that family concert in the park this summer. And we're doing another family, an acapella family concert, Cat's Pajamas, that will be coming in this summer. You can see how the kids can get in the river there. 
that's our little island that they wander to. That's the stage we use. And in the summer, it does have a band shell over it. So we are really lucky to have this beautiful space to have programming in addition to our beautiful building. Mm. That's where they wade across to get to the island. Oh, there, in case you absolutely needed to hear the river. That's what I love that like. sound. Uh-huh. <laughs> So we, so do I, that's why I had to put it in there. So <laughs> I brought um, copies of what we're planning for this summer, but before I get that far, did anyone have questions about the building that I should maybe address? Well, I do have a couple questions. Okay. So that piano that you have in there, it is mm -hmm. beautiful. Isn't it gorgeous? Yes. Do you offer lessons on that or... Do, if kids are taking lessons, can they come and practice there? Or is that just mainly for people that know how to play to sit down and play a song? It's mainly for people that know how to play, but we do have open music times frequently throughout the year that anyone can come and share their talent. Um, the local piano teachers will, before COVID, would have their recitals here. Oh. Um, and we kept, they were during open library hours so people could enjoy what the students learned and shared. Um, or you can bring your own instrument and play that during your open mu our open music times. That's weird. Mm -hmm. Then I just had another question about you had some craft kits and and did I hear you right that you gave the craft kits out and then in order when they return the craft kits you had them return something so you could count that. As a circulation, yes. We always put a supply in there that is borrowed. That is our understanding of how we can count those as a circulation. So those bags are actually checked out. So what um, types of things are in there that they borrow? Like scissors, glue, stuff like that? Um, yes, like the one with the coffee filter butterfly has watercolor paints and a paintbrush okay. in there. So they can they have to use those to make the craft and then they send it back with those in it. We put crayons, markers, scissors, glue, glue dots, glue sticks, um, anything that they would need to make the craft. Everything is in there. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Trisha, I have a question. Yes. Um, do you charge people if they don't return like crayons and watercolors and things? I don't. I put things in there that are cheap enough that if they don't come back, I'm not too sad. Mm -hmm. um, we do we the same do, thing. I was just curious. Um, yeah, yeah. Our we, director was like, we're not going to deal with that. <laughs> yeah. So it was not worth my time. Right. And um, there, we are fine free, but there are certain things that still carry a fine and the craft bags are one of them. So those, if they keep them longer than a week, they will get fined that way. Can they check those out for longer if they have to? If they need to, they can ask for an extension. We're always happy to do that when they check out or you can renew them. Okay. I can look to before we're done, I can go see what the adult one is. And I think the tween one this week is a make your own bowl with yarn and cardstock. It's really cool. You kind of weave your own bowl. And then in the book bundles, Trisha. Yep. In the book bundles, you have five books. And did you say you have four, be four beginning reader books with that too, along with uh, um, just the regular reading books for children? I put four books, four fiction books, either beginning readers or oh. picture books. And I try and put one easy reader nonfiction in there because it helps with our nonfiction circulation. And it helps okay. parents know that we have nonfiction books going way down to that preschool level. They tend to start looking for them. Um, because now they know they exist, you know? Sure, sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, before I share my screen back or stop sharing my screen, I wanted to show you, I took pictures of this year's, what this year's summer calendar looks like. This is what the parents get. It goes on to a legal size sheet and it's folded. So June, July, and August are all on the same piece of paper. Um, but I, I, cut it up and put it in pieces on here for you guys so you could see it easier. Let me blow it up there. So anything in yellow are for all ages. Anything in blue is for children. Green, teen events are in green. Um, you can see my scribbles on there. Sorry, I was learning how to use the iPad pen. 
Mm -hmm. And the adult events are in red. Um, anything with a star after it requires registration, but we are, and we'll keep registration limited for those, but we're really trying to um, start either spreading out throughout the whole building or using all of our outdoor and indoor space so that we cannot have registration in the summer if possible, because people's plans change based on the weather. If it's really nice out and it's 90 degrees, they're going to go to the beach instead of even if they registered to come in here. Mm -hmm. So some of the big programs we're looking forward to are Steam Grab and Go, Tween Toolbox and Teen Boredom Kits. Those are the bags we've been doing all through COVID. Those are projects that do not require checkout. You just stop in, grab one, depending on your age. And they are all projects that um, are geared for learning or fun like our Play-Doh Volcano was one of our uh, most popular ones. And we do a video with those, an instructional video that's posted on YouTube. Um, and we'll continue to do those once a month for now. I don't know for how long, but they were so popular. I'm not sure we'll be able to talk anyone into stopping them. We have been doing our Read to Dog programs for a while and that'll continue over the summer. So Read to Piper is one of our therapy dogs that comes in. On June 16th, you can see we have mini golf. We will turn the entire library building into a mini golf course. And we have tons of putters, plastic, both the little toddler plastic ones and the grown up size that we've collected from Goodwill and St. Vinny's over the years that people can use. Um, our preschool dance parties, we've been doing all school year and that's where we use those squares in the community room. Those, uh, I have someone that comes in and does those for me. Her name is Amy Miller and she is super fun and easy to work with. Just like Catherine, we're doing an adopt a plush pet party. In, oh, our escape room. That was something else we started doing last fall as a program that was only one family at a time. So it didn't carry any COVID risk exposure risk to it. I forgot to show you our storytelling room. Maybe I'll do that before we're done. Our tiny storytelling room that where I used to do story time before we had 30 and 40 people coming, we converted into for the moment a prep space for our steam grab and go kits and our escape rooms. Um, we plan them. We have a person on staff that does most of the planning of all of the clues and riddles to solve. Her name is Courtney. And we decorate that room and put people in there for 60 minutes and they have 60 minutes to try and solve all of the riddles to escape. Um, so everything's locked with um, different kinds of locks that they have to solve the riddle to unlock and each spot has a clue to go up to keep going. Um, they're super fun. So that has registration because it's one family at a time or one group at a time. You sign up as a group. You can see Read to Mushu is on July 2nd. People can come in read to the Bearded Dragon. I stole Catherine's idea of a summer prize store this summer for the first time when kids come into the library, since we are doing Beanstack for all of our online reading, we wanted to do something for when they come in. So when they come in and check something out, they can get a book buck. And I think I have a picture of the book bucks. Um, here they are. They can get a book buck and they can come and collect them and come spend those book bucks in July at our summer store. So we're cleaning out our closets to find things to put in the summer store because Catherine reassured me that all the little oddball odds and ends in my storage closets are loved by all children. You would be amazed. <laughs> so, I found like some old plastic lobsters and the kids are like, these are great. Do you have more? And I'm like, no, nah, more. I found them in a corner. <laughs> well, you reassured me that that would work. So that's what I got. We're, we have a couple more closets to go and that's what we'll be putting out there. And we talked about the stuffed animal hospital earlier. Our loose end sewing group will be here with their needles and threads and glue and eyeballs and anything that might need fixing on a stuffed animal. You can bring them in and you get a little report when they leave on how they how the animal did and what was done. Um, they do a great job. That's super fun. Our cat's pajamas, acapella concert in the park, we're looking forward to. Anything you see in black is what the village of Waterford's doing. That's not the library, but we wanted parents and families to have one calendar that had most all of the local events on it. So the library is not doing a beer garden. Just I was about to ask, to how do you pull that. a beer garden? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's impressive. Of, the village of Waterford is doing a beer garden. For adults, we also have uh, book bingo this summer. We've done that the last few years and that's super popular. Our yoga has been one of our most successful uh, 
online programs because we haven't done a lot. We tried a few things on Facebook Live. We tried a few things through YouTube. We just weren't getting the response to make it worth doing. Catherine's the only one that can do that online story time and get tons of followers. (laughs) Um, But yoga, for some reason, we have between 50 and 60 people log into Facebook Live to do yoga on a Monday afternoon. That is awesome. We just started opening it up for people to come in person or join online. So now we have both. Um, And so that'll probably continue. We'll probably be doing that online forever. Um, And then in here is what August looks like. Hopefully, we planned guessing what we thought would be successful is pretty much what we did. I know Laura said that she also went around and used her funds to purchase gift cards from mm-hmm. local businesses for prizes. We did that last year and again this year. We're, we're doing the same thing. We use donated funds to purchase gift cards for prizes for each of our prize packs. Um, and we're really proud of that too. That just had to happen. We couldn't go to our local businesses and ask for donations after the year that they've had. Mm-hmm. Just wasn't possible. So I don't know if there was anything that I didn't show that you wish you could have seen I'll stop sharing my screen and turn my camera around here so you can see my face again oops okay I don't know what happened there we go so is there anything I skipped besides the storytelling room that I should have shown can you just explain or maybe show I don't know if you can show your story walk at all did you say you have a story story walk? walk out there We don't have one up there right now, but we do put it along the sidewalk. I can show you the sidewalk pictures again. We put it along the sidewalk and all along the river. Okay. Um, We just do it on like um, those little, Julie, can you go run and grab a story walk sign from the basement? Wait, how how far is it going to take? Because I have story walk, the the, the yellow ones? Yeah. Give me a second, Julie. It's in Mm -hmm. my office. Okay. (laughs) Ours are in the basement. We do have a basement for storage too. We're really lucky with storage because I know a lot no. of libraries don't. My have office that is in the basement. Yay! Brought to you by your local library. That's what we put them on. We actually just started talking um, to our director. Our director's looking at getting us a permanent story walk where we'll have wooden permanent installations around the library for that because okay. we did a lot of story walks during COVID. That was something we did do. We didn't do a lot online, but we did story walks and we did stuff in person and grab and go style. Okay. Well, thanks. That sounds great. Do you, so I, can I just interject something here? Sure. So for story walks at the Bloomer Public Library, we have those and we have the wooden, we have like a wooden um, four by four that's inserted into the ground. Mm-hmm. And then there's like a flat platform on top of that. And that doesn't really work the best for story walks. What I think would be better, and I we don't have it at our library, but I've seen them, is, you know, if you t- can just put the... Mm-hmm. Um, the book this way so that the rain can come down and not land right on the, on the picture. And also the sun really, really beats oh, on those pictures. Okay. And, and even after like a few weeks to a month, the pictures that were very colorful, the illustrations in these books are awesome. But after a couple months, they get so faded by the sun, they don't even look good. So that's okay. the only thing I would suggest is just really watch what you're going to use for your story time book platform. Well, thank you. Thank you for the tip as we're looking at with our director. We looked at a few options actually. Slow drop in the nod bumps. At a kid's Mm -hmm. level, it makes sense for it to be vertical as well. Mm -hmm. So I think we are Mm -hmm. looking into that. But those are some good uh, um, thoughts too, is the rain. I didn't think about Mm -hmm. that. But the sun is the major killer, I think. Yeah, that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if anyone had any questions or if I wanted to do, I want me to show you the storytelling room that I skipped by accident. Yes, please. Sure. All right. I can turn my camera around. We can go for a walk. Adventure. <laughs> Your library has so much good, nice room and space. We are really lucky. I think that's why we were able to open as early as we did is because Mm -hmm. we had so much space to spread people around. And do you have any programs in your basement? 
No, I can show okay. you the basement too if you want. It's a mess. It is all oh. storage all the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it occasionally floods. So here's oh. our storytelling room. This is where I used to do all my story times, but really we were having 20, 30, 40 people at each story time and we did not fit in here. So there's um, June grab and go bags if you're interested. They're ready to go over there. So I don't even know how big this room is, but pretty small. Mm -hmm. I love the quilts on the back wall though. That was my former partner was a quilter and she made those for us. They're beautiful. They're so gorgeous. She had a talent. I'm not quite, not as talented. <laughs> she made this one too. Very hungry caterpillar quilt. Oh, cute. Aww. So cute. Um, the only other thing I could think of that you might want to see is people always ask me where we store all of our library of things items. Oh, I can also show you our tween craft this week, whatever that is, because we're walking past it anyway. Here is this week's tween craft is a yarn bowl. Mm. There's our sample. So you can check that out, make it, and then you keep the craft and send back the extra supplies for us. And I don't know what adults, it doesn't look like adults have one at the moment or they're all checked out. But here's some adult craft kits that you can check out. Here's a sock loom. You can make your own socks, knitting looms, jewelry kits. But most of our library of things items are kept behind our circulation desk. We just had to expand this. On the floors are literacy kits. Those are backpacks all on the same theme filled with a couple books, toys, games um, that you can check out the whole bag. Everything else that's in the binders I showed you are stored in these type bags and hung up here and around the corner. Shelvers love them. Mm -hmm. So this is our back room as long as we're back here. No, I know. <laughs> More storage. More storage. Oh my storage, gosh, I know. Look at all that space. I know. Yes. I'm not mm -hmm. allowed to store things back here though because they said I have enough room. <laughs> do you? Um, no, but they claim I do. <laughs> when we do van bins, we have this room that used to be our lounge that got converted to our, so all the van bin check-ins happen in here. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to walk you. You'll see me behind Julie's desk. There we go. Mm. Hi, Julie. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know what else I can show you guys. I think that's all I have. I think that was oh, great. I love that card catalog. I know. Oh, thank you. That's my <laughs> markers and highlighters and scissors. What a good use for it. That was here when I started. I've been here since September of 2004. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Does anyone else have any questions or things I should have talked about but didn't? I think you, you covered it very well. Thank you. <laughs> well, that with only five of us, I, you know, I felt a little funny because I think all of you have been here. Not oh, me. Hasn't? Oh, not Florence. Okay. But I would love to come. I, and Laura yeah. was here until like 15 minutes ago. I'm guessing she started okay. having people coming into the library. So. Yeah. yeah. She well, ducked out. You saw I didn't care. I just walked right past her. <laughs> <laughs> There's always someone in here that's never empty. Yeah. Very well, nice. Thank you so much for your presentation today. It was awesome. And I loved your library. Thank mm -hmm. you. We're really lucky. Yeah. Yay! Yay! Well, that what else? Was fun. What else? Do you want to talk about anything else, Flo? You know, our our next meetup is going to be probably in September. Huh? So I don't really have any um anything really really I haven't really decided on the date yet. It's not pinpointed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh -oh. I mean, nothing really. I just really enjoyed the presentation today. It was a lot of fun. I just love doing these and, and seeing everybody. It's really hard with COVID that we can't get to get together actually at the libraries. That would have been yeah. fun too. But this way, more people, I think, can join in if they, if they have the time. Yep. So, but it was awesome.
Does anybody else have a comment or anything you'd like to share? If anybody has an idea about a fun program for the summer, your summer reading too, you can um, interject that now too, if you'd like. That, that is true. Even though it's funny because like the rest of us are on the same system. So we had a summer reading meeting. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, we talked about the stuffy stuff. Yeah. What, else? what else is going on? Um, we're making fidget toys and DIY stress toys. And I'm doing spy games again, which I love. Um, what kinds of fidget toys are you making? You know what? Uh, that is happening in August and I will finalize that list and let you know. Okay. <laughs> awesome. But I one time made the mistake of, we were doing like a library thing, a virtual one. It's like, yeah. And you know, we can, we can maybe do programs about like how to make, you know, let me know what you want to do. We could make fidget toys if you want. And then I said that out loud. And then we had multiple children coming into the library with a little mask being like, where are the fidget toys? When do I get to make them? And I was like, it was a hypothetical program. So I'm going to make that happen for real now because apparently, and they always went to the same person too. Every time they'd always go straight to Liza and be like, where are the fidget toys? And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just gonna leave a message. And I was like, no, you didn't miss anything. Like they, they just missed the, it's something we could do. So anyway. So we're doing that. <laughs> That'll be fun. That will be fun. Um, yeah. Well, I've, thanks everybody for coming. And I don't have anything else to say. So um, unless you do, it's been a great, a great hour and lots of new ideas for me. So thank you for sharing everybody. I think, thank the, only, you, I think, I think the only thing I would add is that, and I'm going to say this, also knowing people are going to watch on YouTube. If anybody else wants to host, or if you have something you think would be awesome to be on the YSS blog, we are always looking for posters and it can be a guest post too. Like you can say, I want to write one thing where you're not like locking yourself down for like every Monday for the rest of your life. But if you have something really cool that you want to share, we would love to hear it. Um, and we would love to share it on the YSS blog. Thank so you everybody. You. We hope to Thank see you, you soon. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.